All right, I'm with you guys. All right, eBay doesn't have to be the only option for you to sell your coins. Um, I mean, I've talked a pretty good game in, what, 10 years since I've been doing this, and have heavily promoted and pushed eBay as the top, uh, I guess, uh, marketplace to sell coins and currency. Okay, and the big reason why I'm doing that is that you have at your fingertips tens of thousands of people um, advertising-wise that can look at your items at any given time, all right? It, it has the, the most amount of attention. It has the most amount of eyeballs that are constantly traveling, looking for something specific. So when I tell you that eBay is probably the most important tool of our generation, it's probably a correct assessment. Now, I'm not one to completely toot my own horn, you know, and say that, oh, yeah, I'm I'm the greatest at what I do, and, you know, I, I know everything, and everything revolves around Blue Ridge Silver Hour, because I tell you what, that's complete and utter bullshit. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm just a guy that shares in the passion of the hobby, all right? I mean, who doesn't like collecting money, uh, especially old money? That's, that's my bread and butter right there. But, you know, some of us don't have the luxury uh, of using anything else that's easy. All right? I found eBay to be extremely easy. However, the caveat is you need to make sure you don't sell over $600 if you, this is going to be just a one-time thing because you're going to get a tax form from uh, from eBay and you're going to be forced to file that and you never know. You probably end up, that might be something that will break some people into losing a a, um, a refund, all right? And we're not going to do that. But if you are ready and willing and able to sell your coins and you're ready to make that next step because the powers that be tell you to and the money is so good right now, even during the middle of the summer, you know, you don't have to use eBay. However, you have to pre be pretty gosh darn sure of what you have. And I think 75, at least 75, 80% of the people, uh, you know, that are relatively new to the coin collecting scene, to the hobby, to the industry, oftentimes they'll find stuff and change that are, that's intriguing, right? I mean, we all go through this, um, you know, especially if we're brand spanking new right out of the box, we don't know what we have most of the time, okay? And then there's going to be other instances where, you know, and I see it all up and down my comments page. They're like, okay, I have this coin. Where do I sell it? Or I have this coin. It has this and this and this going on with it. What do I do? All right. And these are all like very common, very innocent, fantastic questions I receive. But I get a lot more of them than I'm able to handle. I mean, having 1,400 some odd videos on my channel kind of does that to a person. It's like, yeah, you, you I have... I'm firing all the bullets out there, and it's giving everybody an opportunity to try and, and get their question in. The only problem is I don't respond to the much older videos. Like, I have videos that are 10, 11, 12 years old. I don't touch anymore. Okay, those are antiquated. Uh, we're coming out with newer material, newer news-type breaking stuff, along with other things. Because, you know, in 10, 11, 12 years, the industry has changed <laughs> And so has the marketplace. So we need to adapt to that. And I, I continuously refresh with new videos, new content to help you folks understand where we're sitting at today and how to do something. So you've been staring at this eBay screen for well too long. But I'm telling you what, okay, if anything, if you're not going to use eBay to sell your coins, at least use it as a tool, um, you know, and I'm going to show you how. If you don't know what you have, this is something that I encourage everyone to at least try. Give it a kind of a, a little test run, a little dry run, and then go from there. So we're going to start out at collectibles and art. Okay, I have it highlighted. There's a drop down, and then there's coins and paper money here on the left side. We're going to click into that. Now, most of the folks I deal with, okay, they have a lot of U.S. coins. So there's a section of U.S. coins, but... There is also folks that have questions about world coins. So you pick and choose whichever one you need to. For this exercise, we're going to use Coins US. 
And to keep it generalized, I like to just use see all in coins US. Now this is gonna bring up everything from lots to bullion to graded coins to non-graded coins to half cents to silver dollars to pennies to nickels to gold, you name it. This is gonna be everything in a box for US coinage. Now, from here, I would say if we're trying to figure out and identify something that we have, all right, oftentimes most people will think that they have an error coin or they'll have a doubled die or they'll have some sort of other type of, you know, variety. So this is where we're going to start at. We're going to start out with the most broad, generalized searches that we could get. So that way, and at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is find our coin that we want to sell. All right. We want to try and find a coin, our coin that we have currently in our possession with the same exact error, with the same exact anomaly, you name it. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in something. Okay. And this is going to be kind of like, um, again, an example of what we're looking for. Um, I, so I found a 1977 penny error. All right, so the one thing that I tell you um, to help kind of narrow your search is to put in the denomination, okay? So now when it comes to pennies and cents, people will use either penny or cents. They won't use the plural form of those two words because they're going to drill it down to the plural forms of that search. So keep it general. I would, I would probably try penny. I would try cent. And then go from there. So we're going to look at every conceivable 1977 penny error that exists on eBay today. Keeping in mind, this platform hosts many millions of different listings. So oftentimes, you're not going to find a better place to go to to identify exactly what you have. So we're going to go ahead and hit the enter button. And we have 96 results of a 1977 penny error. So you're going to take the penny that you have in your possession. You're going to take a close look at it. You're going to put a nice, good, strong desk light on it. You, you know, I would say if you have any sort of magnifying glass, whether it's a cheap dollar store version that probably does like 2x power magnification, or maybe that jeweler's loop that goes as high as 30x, or, you know, a, a, a microscope, a USB style microscope, whatever it is. You need to be able to identify your coin so that way it matches specifically to one that you see on here. All right, see see how generalized folks get? 1977 P. All right, so we do know that a missing mint mark, 1977, is going to be a Philadelphia minted coin. All right, so let's get that out of the way. But at the same time, this will also bring up all the Denver mints, all the San Francisco mints, because we only put the date in. We didn't put a mint mark. So again, keep it generalized. We're trying to identify what we have here. All right, so looking at the coin, it looks like just a regular penny, but is that what you have? If it is, then you'll click into the listing and then, uh, you know, look at the description box of the listing and come come to some sort of like, understanding if that is truly what you have all right take a look at some of the other things okay and then read read what is on the subject line for that particular listing here's a denver okay we can we can identify that that's a 1977 d it's got a denver min mark lincoln sent thin planchet error okay so maybe you have a coin that is a lot thinner than some of the others all right uh, and these coins in 1977, the Lincoln cents weigh 3.11 grams. So if a coin is coming up 1.96 grams, there is obviously something going on with it. Is it a um, underweight planchet? Is it rolled too thin? Is it a, a coin that's um, uh, got environmental damage? Has it been acid dipped? You know, these are all of the things that you could thereby drill down even further to identify your coins right because true legit us mint errors are the stuff that sells for a lot more money now again you don't have to sell on ebay but you need to know what you have because here's going to be your next steps 
you're going to go down, you're going to look at, you know, some of these coins. And we're going to pick out two different coins. All right, one that's a legit U.S. Mint error and another one that is not. Okay, so I get this one quite a bit. The underweight, thin, planchet type of coin. Could be an error, could be damaged. So now that I know that there is another listing that is the same as the coin that I have, I am thereby going to use alternative sources to try and sell and promote my coin. Let's go ahead and explore some of these options. All right, starting with probably something and a place that's going to be a little bit more easier to access to you, and that's going to be coin shops. Coin shops, okay? You need to utilize your coin shops. If you haven't been to a coin shop, it's always good to know exactly what you have. So that way, when you go in and talk to that coin dealer, you're going to sound a little bit more intelligent. All right, and then they'll take a look at the coin. They'll go ahead and, you know, grab their magnifying glass and they're going to tell you, well, Mr. Or Mrs. Madam or sir or whatever the case may be, what we have here is a coin that's been acid dipped. It is thereby damaged and only has a value of one cent. Okay, so worst case scenario, that's going to be kind of like one of those answers you're going to receive. All right, so that's that coin right there. All right, if we elected to go in and say, hey, you know what? I have this same exact coin. It's got that raised, uh, what they call, what? what is that, cud? Cud, little raised blob of metal right on the coin? I have one of these. And this person's selling his for $75. But take a look at that. I have that same exact cud on my coin. It's neat. I mean, it looks like it looks like a, a U.S. Mint error. You know, it's uh, it looks like it wasn't added after the fact, I think this is what I have. So from this point forward, okay, let's go ahead and explore those options again. Now, the damaged coin I told you about, you went to a coin shop. They told you it was acid dip damage. This particular coin, you could do the same thing. You could walk into a coin shop. They may or may not be interested in a coin like this because coin dealers are narrow and linear and how they do business. They want stuff that they could obtain for as cheap as possible and that they could push out of their store at a pretty good profit right away. You know, your silver, your bullion, your gold, your platinum, your type coins, things of that nature. They don't want to hold on to stuff that they're going to have a hard time selling. So they, you know, don't take offense to it, but they may tell you, yeah, we don't deal in errors or we're not interested. Or we'll give you two dollars for this coin, knowing full well it's worth fifty bucks or forty or seventy five or whatever the case may be. So a coin shop generally is like the easiest kind of like low hanging fruit option for a lot of folks to obtain cash now if they want to sell their coins. All right, they know what they have. They're gonna go to a coin shop. They're gonna try and wheel and deal. Now. If you're a little bit more open to the idea of using the internet space to try and sell this, you do have other options available to you. You could use the forum chat pages like Coin Community, Buy Sell Trade, uh, Cointalk.com has a Buy Sell Trade group, Collectors Universe forums, which is a part of PCGS. Actually, Collectors Universe is the parent company of PCGS. But there's a number of forum chat page sites that you could utilize. There's even a Lincoln Cent resource. That's the name of the website that has a buy, sell, trade group as well. And guess what they deal in? Lincoln Cents, people. You could sell this on there uh, for a undetermined amount of money. But there's also another option for you. Social media. There's buy, sell, trade groups on Facebook. People are selling these on um on TikTok, believe it or not, they're also selling them. Uh, I've heard a few people using Snapchat, that, but that's a much more like progressive for the you know much younger folk crowd. Uh, like my daughter, who's 21, and the swears by Snapchat. I don't know why, but um, you know, and people are also selling on like whatnot. They're selling on Discord. They're selling all through through all these different weird sites, and they're doing okay. Okay. The, the benefit of selling it off of eBay is you go you don't get tagged for the fees on selling on eBay. Whereas if you sold it on uh, XYZ social media site, 
you know, the, um, the amount of payment methods kind of opens up. All right, you could take Venmo, you could take PayPal, okay, uh, if, you got, if you and the buyer actually have a pretty good rapport and you trust each other, I mean, you could do that friends and family. That's if and only if you've known them for a while. But oftentimes, it's going to be a goods and services type of exchange where there's going to be a 3% fee. But hey, it sure beats the living crap out of an eBay 12.9% fee, right? If you could sell it on there. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different extra resources outside of eBay, but eBay is bar none, the best research tool that you could possibly ever use. Again, keep it generalized. Okay. You have the coin in hand. It has the date on there. Use those two things. Is it an error? Does it look like an error? What does it have schmutz on it? You know, identify exactly what you have before you go and try and selling it because the people that just they put they put the um, um, the wagon before the horse I don't know if you guys have heard that that saying before but the people that have done that usually generally end up failing they get discouraged by the hobby they get discouraged about the people the professionals the dealers and they end up leaving but I'm telling you this right now you can make some seriously good money in the industry, in this hobby, if you just slow your roll down a little bit, do the research, and then ultimately decide what you want to do with the thing. And then go from there. This is more of a public service announcement for a lot of folks out there. I would say 80% of my general audience who aren't subscribed to me, but they got the, the dollar signs flashing through their brain the moment every time someone says, this Lincoln Cent sold for five grand. This one sold for three grand. If you're looking to do that, you need to slow down, get a little bit. I'm not talking about the, the, the full on bore educational type of experience, but at least get some education under your belt. So that way you're not going to feel too stressed out when it comes time to sell your coin. You have to be confident in what you have. If it's damaged, you need to learn to accept that and move on. It's okay. The coins are not going to be perfect. There's a reason why some of these coins are worth $10,000 and up, right? Is that it's not by mistake. The coins are rare. The more rare they are, the more they're worth, right? So that's why I wanted to talk about. Hopefully this was somewhat of a uh, easy kind of quick learning video for a lot of you that are kind of like pulling your hair out trying to figure out what you have and how to sell these things. But now, you don't have to feel so lost, guys. And that's why I'm here. I'm Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. I want to thank each and every single one of you for all of your views and support. If you have questions, go ahead and post them below. But I am confident and hoping that a lot of you that do have questions about the coins that you have to is at least go out and try and find what you have first before you start giving up or before you start hammering uh, the professional folks that are available on social media and on YouTube to try and get your answers, all right? Um, because, you know, the easiest money is made with hard work. Keep that in mind. All right, guys, that's all for today. You guys have a good one, and uh, best of luck in trying to sell your coins uh, because money is still good right now. Um, and say get even more better once we get into the holidays. All right. Have a good one, guys.